Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to career mode. Oh look, a lot of things have changed around here. Most importantly, my profile picture. I, I say most importantly, I'm not sure if that is most important really. But yes, we have a new profile picture on the channel. I'm intending to start up new games, as you should be aware, so... It's time to kind of move away from the KSP-specific branding. But you know, I think it looks quite good. It certainly looks okay, it looks fine. Nothing's changed, it's now 2014! 2014, the year of opportunity, just like 2013 and 2012 and 2011. And in this year, in this month specifically, I have my birthday coming up, so we're going to be getting a rig upgrade. Yes, I'm going to splash out on myself a little and buy us an AMD R9 290 graphics card. And don't complain, because I've done my research, okay? I understand. I probably shouldn't have said that. Now everyone's going to post a million comments saying why I should get NVIDIA cards instead. But not to worry, because I won't read them. Well, I'll probably read them, I just won't reply. I've done my research, I've gone on a lot of forums, seen a lot of things, and uh, as long as I get a non-reference and upgrade my cooling and all that nonsense, then I shall be fine with the... Uh, 290. Plus, it's one of the best cards out there at the moment, so no more laggy frames per second, hopefully. Well, the thing is, right, the thing is, there's potential for KSP to crash due to an upgrade in graphic, graphical memory. Uh, Scott Manley has this problem, but he uses a lot of mods, and I think that's the source of it. So, not going to use, uh, not actually going to be using any more mods going into 2014. This channel's been known for its stock nature, and there's only one thing I'll be using. And we shall see that in the upcoming video, and that's Telemachus. And no, not for multiplayer, I'm just using it for information. After we finish career mode, which by the way is what this series is, I should really be commentating the video, I know, but I'm not going to be because I'm talking right now about IVA view. After we finish career mode, we'll be moving on to a series primarily based in internal or intravehicular expeditions. Which is going to, I should say, activities, intravehicular activities. Which is going to be quite interesting. Anyway, shall I get back to commentating the video? I think so. We've built ourselves a ship. This is career mode. Using the limited amount of parts we have available to us, we've built a successful interplanetary stage. Or interplanetary ship, even. A not so successful interplanetary stage. And we're going to hopefully use this to take us out of Val. However, you can see that with the skipper engines we have available, we don't have the main sails yet, it's just skipper, we start losing velocity very fast as we do our stages. Coming down now to 50 meters per second at 10 kilometers. This is unbearably slow. So unfortunately that launch stage isn't particularly great. We try again with a bit of a different matchup and we get further. We're now 30 kilometers, traveling 600 meters per second. However, when we drop these, uh, it becomes quite apparent that we just don't have the thrust. So unlocking mainsails is something we probably need to do in order to get efficient launch stages. However, who said that we need efficient launch stages? I mean seriously, come on. We're adults here. We don't need to be efficient. Nuclear fission, yeah. Uh, reason being that this is career mode, true, we have limited parts, but we don't have a limited number of parts. So we can just stick on 12 billion stacks like I have here, and that actually makes quite an efficient launch stage. Despite the massive surface area that in any normal craft would cause it to have unimaginable aerodynamic friction. Also known as air resistance, Harvey. Why did you say friction? I have no idea. So here we go. This launch stage is basically the odds launch stage with another one wrapped around it. We've dropped the one that was wrapped and we continue to do our gravity burn or gravity turn even. Getting up, apoapsis out of the atmosphere and we've managed to solve the orbiting problem. So we successfully, and we're going to drop these and then carry on with our successful nature, we've successfully placed something into orbit. But what is it? Well, our interplanetary ship today is made out of two main stages. There's the transfer stage and the lander stage. The transfer is intended to push the lander out to Val, uh, park itself into an orbit around Val whilst the lander detaches and takes its crew of Jebediah and Bill Kerman down to the surface of Val. And this footage today was recorded on livestream, like the space tourism episode that I just posted. And that's a good thing because uh, it took four hours to record because I was doing it on a live stream. I've got to, I think that must be the reason. I've done this mission before in less than four hours. 
it's quite incredible that it takes that long, really. And we didn't actually have that many mistakes. We did think it through a bit more than we would normally have done. For instance, the lander. We actually worked out the force, uh, the thrust of the lander, the acceleration of the engine and the mass and all that nonsense. Uh, and we made sure that it could land on Val. It had enough acceleration to overcome the surface gravity of Val. Which is all well and good. And then we kind of guessed the fuel. And hopefully I've got the fuel right, but who knows. Doing our air capture jewel, we successfully bring our orbital down. Our orbital, we bring our orbit, our orbital trajectory down. And insert ourselves into a bit of an elliptic orbit. Which is actually inside the atmosphere as it's periapsis still, so we need to solve that. So we do. And about an hour later, at least that's what it felt like, it probably was in the region of at least half an hour later, after doing a lot of orbital ballet, we eventually burn at the apoapsis and get ourselves an encounter after slingshotting around Joule a couple of times. So there we go, a... is that 34? 30, 30, 27? 25? 4? Something. A something periapsis on Val. Uh, as we get closer, the map doesn't want to show, but there it is. It didn't want to show that we were going to encounter it, but we just came too close and managed to get that encounter anyway. So, yes, a 20 kilometer periapsis. And because, because we're using only one of our atomic rocket motors, all of the burning in this took an incredibly long time. It was a massive 3 meter tank with some additions on the side, with one atomic motor and then the entirety of the landing stage on top of that. So burns took about 20 minutes, which is potentially why it took 4 hours to do the entire thing, at least a contributing factor. Anyway, so what this means is that getting into orbit and doing maneuvers like this takes an extremely long time and we have to start burning quite far beforehand. Uh, isn't the most efficient way, but having said that, because we're only using one engine we have such a high ISP efficiency generally in total. We have so much fuel and only one engine gives us a lot of bang for our buck. So, we've placed it into a parking orbit. Potential problems are that it's not equatorial, making it potentially harder to rendezvous with it later, but Val is quite a small moon, which means at this altitude there's not an awful lot of space. Uh, <laughs> there's not an awful... It's quite easy to get close, is what I'm saying. The distances are on a smaller scale than it might be if you were in orbit around Kerbin, for instance. So, with our weird semi-elliptical and inclined, heavily inclined parking orbit, we detach in the lander, Bill and Jebediah Kerman on their way down to the surface of Val. Now I said we worked out, we did the calculations, force equals mass times acceleration, we took the mass of a full lander, sorry I just clipped the microphone, I'm holding a pen, why am I holding a pen, Christ, we took the mass of a full lander and used that, and we took the, the force of the LV-909 engine that we're using, and worked out the acceleration. It came out as 2.7 meters per second squared. Then we went on the wiki, found the surface gravity of Val, which is... Oh, I've got my pad here, actually. <clears throat> Let's see here... Uh, yes, 2.31 meters per second squared. So we have plenty of acceleration, however... However, we have... Well, I said plenty, we have enough acceleration. However, we have not an awful lot of breathing room with that. In fact, we come down, and I'm desperately trying to cancel our lateral velocity, but we are coming down so fast, I have no choice but to burn more heavily upwards. And it looks like we're going to crash at any moment. I tell you, this was scary. So we get closer, we're coming down, pointing almost retrograde now, until it seems like we're falling too fast. Uh, certainly faster than 10 meters per second, as the dial at the top there shows us. Oh, this doesn't look like it's going to work, does it? Ooh, only an extra 0.4 meters per second of, excuse me, 0.4 meters per second of acceleration over that which we need to hover. Uh, so we have to burn straight up. Ooh, we can't afford to crash. Burning straight up, lowering our vertical velocity, but leaving our lateral velocity really high, so we do everything we can just to try and bring it down. Luckily, the fuel was sufficient. You can see there in the bottom left, we have over half our fuel left. Which is good, because landing should take up just over half the fuel for the most efficient, so we have plenty of fuel left. Bring it down, quick burn, and cut off. We have landed, ladies and gentlemen, on the surface of Val. It's quite an achievement. A four hour mission. At this point, this was two hours and a half? Something like two and a half hours. 
So, I was feeling quite tired at this point, but that's fine. We brought a hell of a load of science along with us. So we're just going around, we've got a temperature sensor around the back, a thermometer. Warranty void of exposed to vacuum or temperatures exceeding north degrees Kelvin. And here we are, we have our Kerbals getting out. Or our Kerbal singular until we get out the other guy, and then it's Kerbals plural. Plant flag, takes surface samples, doing repeat tests, has been nerfed but it still helps, which is why we've brought along two people, so we can have two samples. Place the fabled Union Jeb with our Val landing. And following the theme of our flag names, we're going to call this one Monumental Leaps and Bounds. I think the one on the South Pole is Baby Steps, the one on the Moon is... Uh... Oh, what's the... I'm not sure, it's like, it's like reaching out or something. Anyway, we have progressively larger steps, okay? And this is Monumental Leaps and Bounds. This is almost the edge of the solar system. Hmm, almost the edge of the solar system. What would be the edge of the solar system, I wonder? Probably Elu. I've never been to Elu, legit. Hmm, something to bear in mind. So, with all our science done down on the surface of Val, we tie it's time for us to warp round to get the uh, craft above us in its very, very inclined orbit, about seven degrees inclined, which, to put that in perspective, is about the same... Actually, I think that's about the same inclination as Elu, and Elu is massively, massively inclined. Anyway, we burn up, so we try and insert ourselves into this inclined orbit, and we end up having a few problems. We have to kind of burn, uh, burn to match its inclination, and then burn up to actually get... It, it works, okay? It works. Uh, nice EVA or IVA perspective there. Bring ourselves up. You can see the target diamonds there getting ever closer. Uh, how far away are we? Ooh, ooh, we need to be burning a lot more up. I was using this as if it, I was doing my scent trajectory as if it was a very low gravitational body, but really it's not. 2.3 meters per second of acceleration. Put that in perspective, Kerbin and Earth indeed have 9.81 meters per second, so it's about, you know, just under a third. Uh, which doesn't seem like a lot, but then you realize that the moon is a sixth, or the moon is a sixth, and Juna. Juna's a third, isn't it? This has got the same surface gravity as Juna. That's quite incredible. Anyway, bringing up into our orbit, and actually, wait, Juna has 3.6. I believe, oh, it doesn't matter. We get into an orbit and warping round the planet, we get our very close encounter of about 0.1. No, that's 1.2 kilometers there, sorry. 1.2 kilometers, and now we need to do some burning to bring our relative velocity to zero. Or not to zero, to about 10 meters per second, with the velocity vector being towards the object we're trying to dock with. I tell you, docking in IVA viewed? Quite interesting. IVA, did I say IVA viewed? I'm not entirely sure what I said then, but it sounded weird. Hmm. Anyway, 600 meters away, 500 meters, counting down because I'm running out of things to say, and we get ever closer. A bit of an editing shift there, and we are just about here. We've swapped to using RCS, trying to align ourselves now. I apologize for how dark the camera is. Uh, I say camera. Where's the camera on this ship? Mounting out from a very long strut that's invisible, perhaps. Yeah, I apologise for the dark footage, but, you know, it's KSP, it's space, we're behind the moon, the sun is extremely far away. This is very nearly, as I've said, very nearly the edge of the solar system. So, there's not an awful lot of light going around. And we can get closer and we can do our docking. And from there, it's pretty much an easy case of just burn home, isn't it? Well, a few things are complicated or add complication to that scenario, in that A, we're in orbit around the moon, which skews up the ejection angle calculations a little bit, perhaps, because we kind of tend to base them on round the planet rather than, excuse me, round its moon. A lot of burping. I've just had an egg and bacon sandwich and it was very nice. Don't know what accent that was. Um, yes, so we're in orbit around the moon, which complicates our return trajectory, and we are in a highly inclined orbit around the moon, which complicates it even further. However, in the interest of keeping you entertained and not utterly bored like we all were on the stream, I've cut out the next hour and skipped straight to the point where we very nearly get our encounter. Come on. Come on. Oh, flicker there. Flicker, flicker, flicker. Give us an encounter. There we have it. And you can see the weird inclination of our ejection angle, but it just so happens to work. 
after about sure, too many minutes. Too many minutes. Oh well, it really doesn't matter. There's Jewel in the background looking quite serene. I do like the Jewel system. Been here a lot in space tourism, but we haven't really gone anywhere other than lathe. However, that will be changing soon. I'm thinking in career mode. Well, the, the, the mode, not the mode, the objective in career mode is for us to complete the tech tree. Which, if we really put our concerted effort in, shouldn't take awful lot longer. In fact, this one today ought to give us quite a lot of science. And if we do end up going to Elu in the next episode, that ought to give us a lot more science. I imagine the surface or the scientific gain from Elo will be Elo. Elu will be a lot higher than merely from a moon of jewel. Hmm, and quite. Or, alternatively, we, come, could, we could come back here and try and go to Tylo or to Lathe. Lathe would be pretty easy, we've done Lathe a lot recently, probably don't want to bother doing that. Could go to Bop. I wonder what happens if you sample the Kraken. They, they, they got to have got that in. If they don't have that in, I will be extremely upset. Biological sample. That would have to be that has to be worth loads of science. Although I suppose, in terms of your space program, biological science probably doesn't give you a lot in the way of advancing your rocket engine technology. Or whatever the case, after a bit more burning and a bit more encounters and maneuver nodes and all that nonsense, we get our encounter. Uh, yes, because the first one we got, we didn't didn't quite work. I seem to remember. I've cut out a lot of this. Four hours down to twenty minutes. Yeah, there's a lot cut out of here. So here we go, and we can uh, warp back, get to our maneuver node, and start burning to actually put ourselves onto our course for encounter. Warp ever closer, and we are in the Kerbin system. Back home. Essentially back home. And we'll be able to land and we'll be able to check out the, check tr the tech tree. Uh, I said in the end of the previous episode that I'm interested in doing voice acting, and I want to elaborate on that a little bit because I actually had to cut out some of what I said in the interest of keeping the video short enough, and maintaining footage, that is. Uh, yes, voice acting. I, I love making YouTube videos, and I love streaming, but what I love, the reason I love doing this is because I get to just talk to myself and put on characters and do voices and, and things like that. I don't really do it an awful lot because that's not the point of the videos at the moment, uh, which is why I'm looking to do voice acting and to get into that. I've had a few people contact me after I expressed an interest in wanting to join indie companies, and I've gone out and contacted a few indie companies myself. Uh, nothing major, for those of you who are interested perhaps, nothing has really come on the line, there is a game which I'm in contact with who have said that they're interested in having me on, and it's fantastic. The game is called Try by Rat King Entertainment, and it is beautiful. They've given me a copy to play, and it's a very, very nice game. So I'm hoping to keep you all up to date on how that proceeds. I, I'm basically, if, if everything goes well and they do have me on, which I'm really hoping they will, and they seem to be uh, quite excited about it as well, due to be contacting me this month about that, uh, if they do have me on, and we go with what we briefly discussed with them, I'll be the part of the narrator, essentially the, the tutorial person, you know, the person who drives the plot forwards perhaps. Uh, it's a monk. The game's got a Chinese feel, which is interesting, because I have a very British accent, so I'm wondering whether that will spoil the aesthetic and the immersion of the game, but it doesn't really matter, it's a puzzler. Try puzzler, make triangles. It's all very, very cool. You can check out check out their website just by searching for Rat King. Try, and back to the video. We got a hell of a load of science, just like I predicted. That was something. We've got a total now of one thousand seven hundred forty-five, which gives us the choice of a lot of upgrades. Now, as I said at the start, using our uh, what are they called mainsail spitter. No, that's not spitters. What are they called? I'm not entirely sure. Whatever they are, they're not quite as powerful, not quite as well optimised for launching as the mainsail full edition is, so we're hoping to unlock that. First thing we get is rovers and rover wheels, because we're going to definitely want to use them. Rovers are oh so very nice. And we get some extra command modules, got a cupola module, which is very nice. There is our mainsail, but we don't quite have enough science to unlock it. 525 out of 550. Guess we're going to have to do some more science in the future. Thanks for watching this episode of Career Mode, 
and I shall see you all next time.